Greetings ladies and gentlefish and welcome to this review of the British Tier 5 artillery piece, The Bishop. Um, so historically this was, this came from a call from the British military to take a 25 pounder field gun and put it on a mobile chassis. And the result was this design which was, well it was frankly a bit of a bodge. It's a Valentine chassis, Valentine tank chassis which was becoming increasingly obsolete, uh, the tank itself. Um, with the turret removed and this fixed casement put on top to mount the 25 pounder gun in. Uh, now, in practice, it had problems. These these things were um, were manufactured and used, for example, in uh, North Africa and in the Italian campaign. But they had problems. The two that spring to mind are one: it's very tall, and especially in um, in uh, North Africa, where you were often fighting on a kind of relatively flat sort of desert-like area. Tall silhouette really stood out. There wasn't really many places to hide it, and so that was a problem. The other thing was that it only had 15 degrees of gun elevation, seriously limiting the range on this machine. So it actually ended up, they didn't produce it in particularly great numbers, and it actually ended up being replaced, perhaps ironically, considering their respective um, locations in the tech tree, it ended up being replaced by the M7 Priest, which the British bought off the Americans, and by the Sexton. So it's ironic because the M7 Priest is a tier 4 machine, I think, in the game, and the Sexton is tier 3. Anyway, <coughs> what do you actually get in game? Well, sorry. <coughs> sorry about that. To start off with, you have 350 hit points, um, which is a pretty healthy slab of health to have. It's certainly the most of any tier 5 artillery piece. The engine power, though, considering the weight of the machine, is pretty weedy. It's less than 10 horsepower per tonne. This is a rather sluggish machine, making it slow to relocate. I mean, and you can see that from, like, the top speed and the traverse speed. They're also quite sluggish. The armour, it's artillery. I'm not going to go into that in great detail, but it says it's 60, 50, 60. The armour is actually relatively good. I mean, even the front of the casement here, where... Sorry, casemate here, where... A lot of people would think you just spam HE at to pen. The front of this is like 50, 60 millimeters thick. Um, I mean, this is at tier 5. The armor is probably not going to save you. It's not as if you can really angle or wiggle this particularly. But it does mean that um, you can't really fire HE at this and expect it to penetrate. Um, if you're shooting this, most of the time you want to just be firing AP. Uh, we'll talk about the gun a bit in a moment. Gun traverse speed is irrelevant. It's such a narrow uh, gun arc. View range sucks, as it does with all of the artillery pieces. And the signal range is also not very good. So let's talk about the gun. I mean, you have a choice of two guns. You've got the quick ordnance. Sorry, there. The quick firing 25 pounder. Um, which is the same gun you had on the Sexton, the same gun you used on the Birch gun, and it's the stock gun on this machine. And eventually, when you upgrade, you get the quick-firing 4.5-inch howitzer. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the stock gun, because it's not very good. The main problem with it is the weedy penetration and alpha damage, making it very difficult to actually get any meaningful damage with this gun, and you really don't want to be shooting Tier 7s with this. I mean, it was weedy on Tier 3 and 4. Um, so you have this gun, 4.5-inch howitzer. 4.65 rate a minute round of f rounds per minute rate of fire, which is actually pretty good for an artillery piece. Um, 57 millimeters of penetration, 450 alpha damage, which is quite weedy, but the gun has a very high shell arc. So often your shells are landing on top of people on their engine decks. Very thin armor, you'll do a lot of damage. 4.5 second aim time may not sound good, but for an artillery piece it's very good. 0.72 dispersion again may sound terrible, for an, but for an artillery piece it is actually quite good. Um, the splash radius is terrible. You only get one shell type. It's HE or nothing. I mean, um, yeah, it's a, it's a small pew pew gun, basically. But it can be very effective. Now, you do have to bear in mind, the range on this is very limited to about 500 meters. Um, and the gun traverse arc is very narrow. So that means you are going to be re-aiming an awful lot. Um, and that's where that relatively good aim time comes into play. Um, if you look at the grind on this tank, it's not too painful if memory serves. If you've already played the Valentine, this is a Valentine chassis, so you'll have a number of these modules unlocked. Uh, the main one that you still have to unlock is the gun, however. You can 
dump free XP on this, it's only 4,100 experience and it will radically improve your performance in the Bishop, so that may not be a terrible idea. Um, but apart from that, I mean, you know, these engines, typically speaking, are used on anything with a Valentine chassis, so if you've already played the Valentine, you can have this in a pretty fully upgraded state, or close to fully upgraded state. If you haven't played the Valentine, then playing this will unlock a bunch of modules for the Valentine, so that's all well and good. Um, there's a couple of different ways of coming at this tank. You can either come at it from... where are we? Where are we? Let me reacquire the bishop. You can either come at it from the SPGs, Lloyd Gun Carrier, Sexton 2 or Birch Gun, or from the Cruiser 1, Cruiser 2 Valentine line that used to lead uh, into the heavy tanks, um, but has since been rejigged with the introduction of new British machines. Uh, if you go via the, the SPG route, bear in mind the Lloyd gun carriage is not very good. The Sexton's okay, but the gun's weedy. The Birch gun is interesting in that it gets a fully rotatable turret, and I do actually have a, a separate review of this tank up. If you go this line, the Cruiser 1, okay, not bad. The Cruiser 2 gets a 3.7 inch howitzer, which is hilarious. The Valentine, not a very good tank, and but you going up this way, you will of course also unlock this tank destroyer line from the Archer up to the FV4005. But the grind is not particularly painful for this machine. What about equipment, crew skills, and um, consumables and whatnot? Well, for your crew, I yeah yeah, I would say. I mean, you can see my crew aren't even 100% on this thing. Um. Sixth Sense on your commander, and probably camo on everyone else to try and keep yourself hidden if at all possible. Other crew skills you might want to consider though are things like uh, Snapshot. I can't remember if that actually works if you don't have a turret. Um, but I think if it does work it's just on the traverse of the gun across the gun arc, so that doesn't really make it very good. Um, Dead Eye may not be a terrible idea to get a little bit more um, critical module damage out of the gun. Um, you've got things like, uh, I mean, the driver skills I can't really recommend because if you're having to, you, you don't want to be in close range engagements. So this thing's going to be slow regardless of what skills you pick. So I really would recommend just Sixth Sense and Camo, I guess. Oh, and Brothers in Arms, of course, if you can, um, to squeeze a bit more performance out of the gun. Consumables, I'm not using anything particularly special. Um, I would recommend possibly pudding and tea. I mean, that's really the only thing you might want to take other than your standard kind of three consumables, really, and that's quite an expensive option. Uh, what about equipment? Well, I would actually recommend with this, ditch the camo net and binos and all that jazz because you don't want to be staying stationary with this tank very long. It's very slow. You want to move up and keep going with the assault, basically. Make sure you stay in range. So I would recommend gun rammer, bit more DPM. Um, where's it gone? Enhanced gun laying drive. The aiming time is relatively good, but the quicker you can aim on a target, the better. I mean, you have a very narrow gun traverse, so you're going to have to keep reacquiring your targets. And this is one of the few artillery pieces that is not open-topped, and thus can mount improved vents, so I would go with that just to squeeze a little bit more out of the tank. Um, <clears throat> is there anything else I really want to say in the garage about this machine? I mean, it's artillery. There isn't actually all that much to say about it. Um, I've already mentioned that the armour is actually relatively good, and enough certainly to shrug off some some HE rounds. And this is something to be careful of if you're engaging the bishop. It has a relatively large health pool for a tier 5 SPG, and the gun is fairly accurate, so you do want to be careful. Don't just sit in front of this thing. Try and get around the sides and the rear if you can. It is quite sluggish to traverse. Um, so I'm not going to talk about critical module locations because it's not the sort of tank you really want to be getting shot in. Um, I'm not going to talk about um, the armor scheme. So I guess let's just go and have a look at some gameplay. So here's the game I wanted to show you. Um, I was originally actually going to show you a game uh, on Himmelsdorf because, you know, with the gun arc on this tank you can actually do fairly respectably even on a map like Himmelsdorf. But uh, it was... Uh, I think it was a game from the previous patch and the replay file was completely screwed. Um, so that wasn't really an option. So here we go. This is a tier 7 game here on Ruinberg. Although looking at the tier 7s, each team has a tier 7 artillery piece and then the enemy team has a T28 heavy tank concept. Um, but to counterbalance that, they have a uh, an extra couple of tier 4s 
compared to what we do. So, you know, in terms of tier and whatnot, the matchmaking's relatively even. Um, now, I'm not camping back in your usual artillery spots because the range on the bishop is quite lackluster. Um, and just trying to see if I can get shots on any kind of medium tanks, tank destroyers and whatnot who might be pushing around here. Anyone at all? Hmm. Haven't seen anyone. Just going to move forward a little bit again because of that really limiting range. Um. <coughs> I have found their light tanks, they're all in the town, which is a little surprising. It seems to be a kind of waste of light tankiness. But, um, yeah, whatever. T-3485. Ah, we should be able to get some shots on him. And a Churchill, well, we should be able to get some shots on him as well. Let's prioritise the T-34, he's higher tier. He's got worse armour and he's got worse health, so hopefully our shots against him should be more meaningful. Um, and he's a more valuable target than the Churchill is. No, neither the Churchill nor the T-34 are any longer spotted. And in this situation, the width of my gun arc is about the same as the width of this street, so it works out fairly well. Hey, there we go. There's a shot on the Churchill. Another shot or two should polish this guy off. And no, he's a moving. 56, but it tracked him in place. Let's see if we can nail this guy. With any luck, this shot should kill him. Ah, missed. Damn it. Maybe the guy was able to move. Oh, no, no. One more round. And good night, sweet prince. And there you can see the rate of fire on this gun. For an artillery piece, is pretty good. Um, and the accuracy, partly because it's uh, you have to be at close range to use this gun, but the accuracy, again, for an artillery piece is pretty good. T-3485, kind of pushing the range a little bit now, but we can still get a shot on him, and there's that shell travel time. Very long, but, yeah, and, you know, not a huge amount of damage when you do hit. If you can land shots, of course, on the top of engine decks and whatnot, that, off, that armor is soft and squishy and you'll do a lot of damage. But these shots are basically just going into the front of his tank and into his turret. But as you saw there, if you can have a shell arc down onto his toft, soft, squishy top armour, you can do a lot of damage. That was over 400 damage to that guy. So moving forward again, just seeing if we can get some shots on the Jagdpanzer IV, or I think it's the Hellcat who's also over there. We're winning this um, game 8-4, which is fairly nice. Um, it looks like it's going to be a hopefully a relatively comfortable win. Um, the enemy team 50 is a little unhappy but eh, he's just going to have to deal with it. So pre-aiming at where these tank destroyers were last spotted. Uh, hopefully going to spot them and there's the bishop on the enemy team. Can we nail him? Come on. We track him. <laughs> well he's not going anywhere while he's tracked so let's see if we can polish this guy off. He's probably not got a repair skill because it's an artillery piece. And there we go. We kill him. Cromwell's taken out the KV-1, so that just leaves the Agpanzer IV and the Hell Kitty. Found the Hell Kitty. Ah, but he's moving and making himself awkward to hit. Well, we'll take a shot. Probably won't hit because of the long shell travel time. Nah. Ah, well, never mind. The Agpanzer IV has been spotted, and our team's just happily pushing through the town. He's on fire, and the Cromwell executes him. There's only two of them left now, Type 58 and the Hell Kitty. Type 58 is now dead, and I don't think we're going to get to the Hellcat either. Um, we take aim, though. Just on the off chance, but I very much doubt we're going to be able to pick up the kill here. There he is. Uh, he's behind buildings and in a pretty terrible position. And the Cromwell leaves him on 5 health. Our allied Hellcat kills our Cromwell. Uh, and then our T-34 nails the Hellcat. Anyway, despite that bit of derpery at the end, that was the game. So let's go and have a look at the results. So that ended up being enough for First Class Mastery and Bruiser. We also completed the Falling Hammer uh, mission. I think this was for the T-28. Destroy at least three enemy vehicles of the same tier as your vehicle or higher and win the battle. So there we go. Um, yeah, everything we shot at, we killed. 
ended up being a pretty decent game. 1,352 damage, which for a tier 5 machine isn't too bad. That Cromwell B did very well, so hats off to him. He didn't deserve to die right at the end, but eh, what can you do? Our Hellcat, uh, anyway. Um, 3 kills, 717 base experience. Yes, that's enough for first class. Remember that as artillery, you're going to effectively share half your XP with the people who are actually doing the spotting. So that can be slightly irritating. Um, 11 shots fired, 6 hits, 6 pens, 3 splashes, 1,352 damage, 3 kills. We even spotted one tank. Who did we spot? Oh, we spotted the bishop. Somehow. Ah, Pass, don't ask me. With a premium account, we made a 27,000 credit profit. Even without, we'd have made a 17,000 credit profit. I mean, it's tier 5. It's fairly profitable, even if you're not spotting your targets. The ammunition's cheap enough and does enough damage to make it a reasonably um, profitable affair. So, yeah. Uh, let's just quickly jump back into the garage and polish things off. What do I think of this thing overall, then? Um, well, I'm not keeping it. I mean... It's it's relatively good for an artillery piece, but it's still an artillery piece, and I still find it kind of annoying to play. Um, I would rather play a tier 5 tank that wasn't artillery, but I think it's one of the best artillery pieces at tier 5. I think it's up there with the Griller. They're the two best ones, in my opinion. Um, just because they're relatively reliable, they're fairly accurate, you know, you can, generally speaking, if you point one of these at a target, as long as you let it aim, you're going to do some damage. So, yeah, I it's a decent machine, but I'm not keeping it. This crew will eventually be moved up to the FV-304. Um, and they'll keep going up the British SPG line, and I imagine as we hit higher and higher tiers, I'll get increasingly frustrated with the long reload times and whatnot, because that's how artillery works. Although they are going to rework artillery at some point. By they, I mean wargaming. So maybe there will be some hope... Um, as we progress up the tech tree. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, possibly even found it vaguely informative. If you did, please feel free to catch some of my other videos and or subscribe to my channel, and I wish you very happy hunting on that battlefield. Ciao, ciao.